history will never be kind to the NWA in 1989, but as somebody that was watching it intently and was all about it at the time, Terry Funk, Ric Flair, Great Muda, Sting with Gary Hart's involvement was just absolutely awesome. I will always cherish that little bit of time. Business-wise, it was terrible, but that wasn't their fault. There were a whole lot of other things working against it, but uh, AEW Dynamite had playoff basketball, playoff hockey working against it last night, Lance. Angel of the Winds Arena in Everett, Washington. I was hoping Brian Alvarez would jump the rail and, and possibly challenge Chris Jericho, and they could both knock each other out. That, unfortunately, didn't happen. Uh, but the show did open with John Moxley and Brian Danielson against Jeff Cobb and Kyle Fletcher. A big brawl on the outside to start before they got back in the ring. Heavy hitting the entire time. I will just die on the hill that people have not done Jeff Cobb right in major professional wrestling companies. The finish came when Cobb lifted up Moxley onto his shoulder so Fletcher could deliver the doomsday device, but Moxley shook Cobb off. He got hit with a Danielson knee. Fletcher was hit with the Death Rider DDT, and it looked really good. Brian said it looked even better in person. It looked fantastic on TV, like he absolutely spiked him. After the match, Kanosuke Takeshita ran in and gave Moxley a German suplex and an elbow to the head while Fletcher and Cobb beat on Danielson. Claudio Castagnoli ran in with a big old giant metal pry bar to make the save. But uh, what did you think about how the show started? I thought them starting it hot on the outside of the ring, getting in, I thought that was a really good way to start the show. Yeah, I always like when a show starts excited. But obviously not every time. So once in a blue moon, it's great. It grabs you by, you know, the seat of your pants and uh, makes you, oh, geez, I'm glad I've tuned in. So I was uh, a big fan of that. Uh, I wonder if Taz has ever managed to look up what that large crowbar is actually called. That was killing him. He was struggling. <laughs> he was struggling. I think it's just a large crowbar, dude. <laughs> yeah, I think they just came that yeah. point. It's a pry bar, I think, when it gets to a certain size. It's crow, then pry after that, I think. Could be, yeah. Um, I'm with you. Like, I hadn't seen much Jeff Cobb. I'm not even sure if I've seen Jeff Cobb before this. And it hurt a lot. So I was really curious. And I thought, for the most part, he wasn't a significant part of the match, if you will, really. And I was a bit disappointed I didn't get to see more of him. Yeah, I don't know what it is. It's not like he's a super promo or anything like that, but you got a legitimate Olympian who looks like that. I just think he could have played, been a better heavy and still can be a better heavy utilized by New Japan AEW or somebody else. On the indies, obviously, because of his size, he gets to stand out. And those power moves that he does look even more impressive on guys who are 140 pounds, you know, as opposed to 220. But it's still, he's an incredible, incredible athlete. Swerve Strickland was up next with a promo video package showing off some of his recent media appearances, which I think is important to make sure that he is being seen getting out there and you want to give the image that, yeah, man, our guys are out there. They're not doing TV shows. They're doing media appearances. They're throwing out first pitches, all that sort of stuff. Basically, it was to hype up his title match coming up against Christian Cage. At that point, TNT champion Adam Copeland came out to do an interview, but was an attack on the ramp by the House of Black. And uh, long story short here, they held Copeland's arms as Malachi sat down, began cutting a promo. He then told him them, uh, being the House of Black, to take off Edge's wedding ring, which they did. King choked Copeland out, and Buddy took it off his finger, handed it over to Malachi. Kyle O'Reilly tried to run down to make the save, and he ended up getting laid out as well. That led to a promo later on in the show from Malachi that said that the uh, the barbed wire match shows that Adam Copeland still has that dark side in him, but once he beats Adam Copeland, he is going to have to bow down onto a knee and I guess uh, profess his, uh, his uh, love of the House of Black, I guess. Uh, Lance, what did you think about this whole deal with Adam Copeland and Malachi Black? Um, It, it had a cool feel to it, but it, it was odd to me in that it feels like Edge has Edge. Uh, Adam Copeland I know, has two hard. things at st <laughs> two things at stake, and Malachi Black has none. The title's on the line, so if Malachi Black wins, he gets the TNT Championship, and Adam has to bend the knee to House of Black. Is there anything on the line that Malachi Black has to do if Edge wins? It seems unfair. 
And will this lead to Beth Phoenix having to come back to turn Adam Copeland? I have a real worry that he is going to go full spooky dark side here and have to bow down to a knee and then be a part of this group. And then at that point, with the wedding ring now actually playing a part in this, I mean, would it feel like, does, does it feel like to you some foreshadowing that Beth Phoenix might have to come in and get her man's head straight again? You you would think just that when they go to wedding ring, it's like she's the only other person connected to that ring. So you would think, but House of Black doesn't have a female participant um, to balance the, the sides with Beth. So um, I have no idea where it's going, because to me, if you were going to turn Adam Copeland, you would associate him with Christian. The Young Bucks? Based off against Christopher Daniels and Matt Seidel in a non-title match. Jack Perry joined the commentating team. Bucks held the heat on Seidel for most of the match until he was able to get the hot tag to Daniels, but eventually the Bucks regained control. They sent Seidel over the barrier into the crowd and then hit the Tony Khan driver on Daniels to win. Afterwards, as they made their way to the back, the Bucks stopped on the stage. They turned around and said they've been trying to rid the locker room of toxicity, and Daniels is screwing things up. So Matt fired Daniels. They told him to pay his family for 30 days, and his security would escort him out, and then... Jack Perry poured in a Woo Energy drink on Tony's head and also left. And I don't like when they're touching the announcers like this with very little to be, to be gained from it, Lance. I don't know. Do you think Tony got the heads up or no? No. No, I don't. <laughs> I don't either. But, yeah, the, the, Christopher Daniels can still go. And the other thing that I was really grateful, because I was afraid they would, like I don't think anyone should make any Vince McMahon references on any show. I was really worried and very relieved when they didn't say, we wish you all the best in your future endeavors. Yes, I was glad they avoided that. I think that was wise. And uh, Christopher Daniels can still go. <laughs> yes, he can. And Frankie Kazarian, his old partner, can still go, too, as we talked about. He's going to be a t Has he ever made any music for you, Lance? Because I just that was new to me to find out that he even had a band, let alone produce Chris Daniels' new theme music. Yeah, I may have to talk to him this weekend in Cincinnati and get him to uh, produce some some theme music for me so I can play backstage when I go to Gorilla. <laughs> Joe Henry gets to sing backup vocals in that, too. Uh, after uh, after another break, we had the uh, Malachi Black, Black promo, and then Hook smashed uh, Sebastian Wolf, T-Bone, Tazplex, forearms to the face, and then the rub rum for the win. Uh, after the match, Hook grabbed the mic, said he wants the FTW title back, called out Chris Jericho. He and uh, Big Bill come down to the ring and Jericho was being his classic disingenuous <laughs> deep pack self turned up to 11 or 13 or 14 wherever the dial can go that's what he's got it up to he has reinvented himself and done things like this uh, several times before Lance we've seen him reinvent himself we've seen him work take things from the fans and then give it back to him he seems to be doing it in spades now what do you think about Jericho as the learning tree well, it's, he's clearly a really smart guy, and he's. I think the key to him being smart is he doesn't swim upstream. He's willing to listen to the crowd, see where they're going, and he adjusts and makes it work. There has been times in the past where people seemingly had said, that's enough, you know, he's he's old news, he's done, and he finds a way to make it work. And there was backlash to him this run, and he's finding a way to make it work. And uh, kudos to him. I guess you don't get to throw that goat moniker around uh, unless you have the ability to keep finding ways to make it work. Quickly, what are your thoughts on Timeless Tony Storm, who still is apparently the heel, and Sarita Baby, uh, Sarita Deeb is apparently still the baby face in their feud? Yeah, this... Like, I'm a big Tony Storm fan, and Sarita Deeb too, but yeah, I'm... I'm confused by the insistence of being so, it's the opposite of Jericho. It seems like they're swimming upstream. She's trying to be a heel while being super popular when doing it the other way would really make it work. It's confusing and baffling, but we can try to figure it out when we get back from break. Wrestling Observer Live. Semper Vivi, Lance Storm here with you, Wrestling Observer Live. Time to put a bow on this thing, but before we do, two other things took place last night on AEW, one of which, Willow Nightingale 
Dr. Bomb, Mercedes Monet through a table. Mercedes Monet and Willow will face off for the TBS title coming up next Sunday in Monet's first match back. Lance, what did you think about the interaction? Always like Willow Nightingale, always, always thinks she comes across great. I would not bet one single penny on her in this match coming up against Mercedes, though. No, but I, I like you, love Willow. She's that person that, and I use air quotes here, wasn't supposed to be the one to get over. She was never the hyped signee, but she got over because people just like her because she's nice. And that gives me faith in humanity. Willow is a likable, happy person, and she brings me joy. Kazuchika Okada seems to be quite happy, but he also seems to be kind of a prick right now and faced off against Dax Harwood. And long story short, Kazuchika Okada retained the AEW Continental Championship, but out from outside the ring after the match, when FTR and the Elite uh, started getting it shaken there with Brian Danielson, Darby Allen appeared and... The man was hit by a bus in the face, Lance, while suffering from a broken foot, and he announced after the show he could have had a concussion. What do you think about Allen actually coming back? I think he's insane. Send us home, Mike. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button, and you'll never miss a video again.